Hello, this is Survival Guyver, and today I'm reviewing the Rock Toll 29 in 1 multi tool. This is a really nice multi tool that Rock Toll actually sent to me to review, um, with the understanding that I only do honest reviews. So if there's something in here that I do not like, or I think they could have done better, I will tell you. Now, of course, this is my opinion, so you know, you could take it as it is, take it with a grain of salt if you want. Um, just don't get it in your eyes because that would burn. So, and this has the 29 in 1, but when you actually go through all of the um, pieces in it, it's like 32 or 33. So you're still getting a pretty good deal, and that's not counting the hardware. So it comes with extra hardware, and we're going to go through it all. It comes with the sheath, comes with the bit set, comes with the two um, universal T-shank blades, and it comes with a little clear tube for the blades. I just I couldn't get it to show up on camera really well. So this is what we got going on, right? So in this little bag here, you have a spare set of the uh, wire cutting blades and the extra screws. And what's nice about this, it comes with the tool. If I can get that to focus. There you go. Comes with it. That's kind of cool. In my opinion, because most brands don't give you the tool to take it apart with. You have two universal T-shank um, um, jigsaw blades. Now you have one that's uh, like this one, the T111D by SQT. They're both made by SQT. Um, one of them is more of a like a wood blade. And the other one is like a, a wooden plastic blade for cutting wood and plastic. So the one, the, the more teeth you have, the better it is at cutting harder things. So it comes with them, right? It comes with all of these bits. Now the key to these are, these are double-sided. So they use a ball retention. You can see this one that funky little design. I haven't found any use for that here, but I'm sure eventually I will. This is the SP8 and the SP4 size with a little ball retention. All of these are marked. You got Torx, four Torx bits, four flathead screwdriver bits, and four hex. I shouldn't say bits because they're double sided, but there's four ends, right? But what about Phillips? Well, it actually comes with Phillips on it. This is a double-sided Phillips. I believe it's pH um, 1 and 2. So you got the, the common pH 2 and the smaller pH 1. And before I go into the rest of the tool, I want to show you the sheath. So the sheath actually has a couple little tricks on its sleeve. So you have this little pocket in the front here, which fits the bits. Okay. Which, girl, it's hard to do with the camera in the way. So the bits go right up there in the front. Got this nice sturdy um, button there. And it's a two and a half inch, if I remember correctly, um, belt loop on the back. Nice piece of nylon. Now, here's where it gets interesting. So there's a piece of extra elastic on this side that goes all the way through. Pardon me. Now, this side does not. So what you have here is you have a short piece and then this part is blocked off. Now, it took me a moment to figure out why. I'm probably not the fastest person in the world to figure this out, but let me show you. Okay, so I'm going to put that down for a moment. I'm going to get this plastic sleeve for the two extra blades. I'm going to put them in there. So this goes on the one side all the way through and it protects the blade so you don't have to worry about anything being a problem. And once this is closed, it's not going to come out. Well, what's on that side? That's weird. Well, it's actually what this is for. So I'm going to roll this up. Like that. That was still in a little Ziploc bag it comes in. This is going to go in the front section. And it doesn't go anywhere. The tool goes in the larger section. 
We can push this all the way down, close in place, and that's it. So the metal one, the metal tool goes through this big slot there. You can see it right at the end if I push on it. That's where it goes. And then the extra replacement pieces goes in this little section here so it doesn't get stuck. That's a nice detail. Um, I have quite a few tools, whether it be Gerber or Leatherman, or in this case, Rock Tool, and that's a nice touch. Somebody actually thought about how to store things in the sheath. So that's cool. Right? So I'm going to put this off to the side, and we're going to discuss this. So this beautiful tool is the Rock Tool 29-in-1. So let me close all this up real quick. See how it starts off. And I'm going to go through each and every of the functions. So that's what you get. A nice looking piece. It's a little hefty. It's, um, I don't remember the weight off the top of my head, my apologies. Um, it is 11.4 ounces. So, you know, it's a little heavy. It's still less than a pound. So that's good news. And it's, um, the stainless steel is a uh, 3CR13, so that uh, helps prevent with corrosion and long life durability and easy to sharpen for the blades. That's a uh, tooling steel that I normally see on some of the gardening tools, so you know they'll take a beating. So let's take a look here. Start on the outside. First one I have here is a Full length, it's three inches. Um, serrated blade, and it locks. Each each and every single one has a nice liner lock right here. So you've got the serrated blade, right? On this side, I'll go to that one at the last. This side here, on the opposite side, you have a three inch plain edge blade, and it's nice to open. It doesn't have thumb studs, but it's got these nice grooves. So it's easy to open. And again, it's got a liner lock, so it's easy to close. It's got a nice solid click when it gets to that position. Okay. This side, I don't have it. I, okay, didn't cut my hand, that's good news. This side, I literally don't have any nails. If you look at my hands, I don't have any nails because I destroy them at work. So I need to actually use a uh, tool for this, so it's giving me too much grief, you know. These are a really nice set of large scissors. I'm going to close the other two blades up before I cut myself, because they are really, really sharp. So, the scissors, you notice, well, it's kind of strange how they don't seem to work. Now, this is one of the only issues I have with this tool. I like that they're really large scissors. And they have a nice little press in dent for the thumb, but in order for them to work, it needs to lock. And they are hard to lock. There it goes. So you need to move this out. So it's in that position. You can't lock it because the spring's in the way. You need to open up this blade a little bit, pull the spring forward, and the back section back, the actual handle, and then it gets tight. That's my only real complaint about how this is. So I don't know if it would have if it would make it any easier to I don't know if there's a way that they can modify the spring here so it's not getting stuck. Because in this position with this down, you can't lock the scissors. Okay? Not the worst thing in the world. It just takes a moment to finagle it, All right? So there we go. Now it's locked, and now you have a really strong set, a really large set of scissors. Well, that's a pretty good size, and the spring is quite strong. But that's my only complaint: that if you're impatient, you don't realize it, the spring gets in the way of the liner lock. 
when you first open it up. So I'm not sure the best way to fix that if you if it's as easy as just removing that nub at the end, but that may mess up the functioning of the scissor. I'm not sure. But once you move that over just a little bit, it'll lock. And then the scissors work very, very well. And they are a large set of scissors, larger than most Leatherman scissors, which is this is commonly uh, compared against. So to close it, you hit the liner lock, close the blade up, push it down. Right? Simple as that. Now, the next one is this. It's another one that I'm probably going to struggle with opening because I have no nails at the moment. Use this wooden dowel. This locks nice and solid. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm starting to lose my voice apparently. Um, so this is a file, metal and wood file. See, so I've used it actually quite a lot. There's a little notch here to help you pick it up, but unfortunately, like I have no nails again, so that's difficult. But you'll notice this thing here. What is this? This allows the blade to be changed out. There's that universal T-shank jigsaw blade. Put that down there for a moment. I'm going to take out one of these. And this is as easy as putting it right there and closing it. Now you have a saw that you can use. Very little play in it. Now, this, I'm going to show you something that's not a fault of the tool, but a fault of the blades. I had a problem in a previous video with reciprocating saw blades where the tool that I was using could only use some blades um, because of how the blade was manufactured. Now, these SQT blades work fine, but let me give you a little bit of background information. Where is... Oh, it's right in front of me. I've got a caliper, digital caliper. All right, let me go put it on. No, I'll do it that way. Zero that out. The thickness of this blade at the T-shank. is one millimeter. All right. So the thickness of the blade is one millimeter, and they both are. All right? So those are both one millimeter thick. The file that comes with it is again one millimeter thick. Why is that important to know? Unfortunately, on the packages, they're not. They don't explain if you get any aftermarket ones, um, that there is different dimensions. So before I get into a lot of the fun stuff, let me close that up. Let me show you a selection of other blades um, so you can see what you may be up against if you decide to get replacement blades of different brands. So I have a spider blade. That's Spider. Most of the ones I have are Bosch. So here's another Bosch one. Here's a slightly smaller Bosch. So wood, wood, metal. Um, let's go to another one here. It's a laminate, which is a little bit shorter. And then again, the really small ones. They're like a thin, like a coping blade. And these are the ones I use a lot. And it's a DeWalt thin metal blade. So these are the other ones I've tested. And so let me show you. A couple of things here to note, and you might want to know this pretty well to begin with. Just short of four inches. Just short of four inches, right? This one here, by the way, 
is three and a quarter inches. And we know the three and a quarter inch one fits. We know for a fact that these fit and they're quite solid, right? Solid, there's very little movement. However, there is a problem. If you decide to use this kind of blade, you can't close it. This is not a, not a fault of rock toll. As far as I, as far as I've tested with other brands, between Gerber and um, Leatherman and Flick uh, and or Flissa and a few others, this is common. But they don't quite fit. So if you decide to use a blade like this, um, you may just have to keep it on the side. All right. Now, something else to note with that. Now remember, those are just less than four inches. That's three and a quarter. What about something like this DeWalt one, which is even shorter? All right. So this is a th the thin metal DeWalt one. I know I'm putting this in inches instead of millimeters because I'm in the imperial system world here. This is effectively three inches. So what happens if you put a three inch one in here? Well, first things first, that fits and it's pretty solid because it's a millimeter thick. But look how short that's going to be. When I put that in there, I'm going to struggle getting it out because the blade is only going to come up to about here on the inside. And there's no, there's no notch on the end of this like there is on the tool to be able to get it out. So then you're going to have to use one of your spare bits or another blade to help you get that out. So I want you to know about that in advance. So I use the metal blade, metal, I use the metal blades a lot both metal and plastic, but they get lost in the tool and they are just difficult to pull out. You can try to pull it out this way, which doing so is actually a little on the sharp side. It digs into your finger. Um, and of course, if you do that, you may actually just unlock it while it's in the tool and, and you're stuck again. So let me take the DeWalt one out. Okay. Now, so we have that, right? Let me find one, there's, I think it's this one. Put it back on metric because it's easier to figure out a millimeter that way. You have some that are thinner than a millimeter. So this is kind of like a laminate, basic wood, like a, almost like a coping saw kind of thing. It still fits just fine. And you can close it, but it's got a lot more play in both directions because it's thinner. So you can have blades that are a little bit thinner. They'll still work, but you're going to have to be a little careful. I can get this to load again. Here we go. Um, because this has a lot more play in it because it's a thinner blade. You can actually see it on the inside here, how much it moves inside the mount. So, that's the heads up on this. There's nothing wrong with the tool, just there's something wrong with the blades. They're not standard all across the board. I think that was the only one that I had that was that thickness. I think this basic metal one as well was a really thin blade. Yeah, it's 0.8, seems to be the smallest. And I found uh, up to 1.2. And I don't know if I've used that one. But there's one in here that's thicker. That's about, I think, a 1.2. I believe it's this Bosch one. Let me take a look. I know there was one that was 1.2 when I first tested them. One point two. So will the one point two one fit? Fits in the end there. And that's solid. That's pretty good. So if it goes up to like a 1.2, 1.3, you know, there's that little notch in there that's, that gives it tension. It'll be fine. But the 0.8 ones, 0.8 millimeter ones, the thinner ones, like the like the metal blade, 
have more flex to them. So that may make it as an uneven cut, depending on what you're doing. And I got that stuck on my finger. So that is what you need to see with those. Is that a, is that a little extra work? Yeah. But I wanted you to know beforehand. So let me put this back in. So it's as simple as that. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to open the tool up. Now, before I completely open it up, I want to show you something. I do this with the Gerbers too, just about every tool. So I have it in this position. So you can see all the way down to the throat of the plier itself. Let me get these out of the view so this will try to focus for a change. There we go. There is no movement whatsoever up and down. Gerber suspension, the first one, the old one, had a little bit of movement. The Gerber NXT moved more than a quarter of an inch. I've had some leather ones, Leatherman ones that worked uh, about equal to the NXT, which was about a quarter of an inch. There is no play in this. I'm trying. There's no play whatsoever in that. It's nice, stiff, and it's smooth. So I'm going to open this up. Okay, so you can see stainless steel. It's got two sets of cutters. There's a hard wire cutter and soft wire cutter. So kind of like um, steel wire, copper wire. You got regular pliers, needle nose pliers. And on the inside, if you look carefully, um, you'll see this little rounded shape on the inside. You got one here, one there. You can see how it's kind of like a little anvil kind of shape on the inside. That's for crimping. So you can crimp regular wire, wire terminals with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's kind of cool. And of course these are replaceable. It comes with them in the tool kit that comes with the tool. So you don't have to buy them extra. They come with them. All right. So that's pretty cool. So what else is in here? Of course, because I lack nails, I don't have the grip I need. Here is a locking driver. So the downside to this, unfortunately, it's not magnetic. I would have preferred if they put a magnet on the end of that so we can run regular bits instead of ball detent um, bits. Nothing wrong with a ball detent other than if you decide to put a regular um, bit in there, it won't hold it. It'll just fall right out. The ball detent gives it a friction lock and eventually when they finally when the ball detents finally fail they'll just go in and out without any trouble it appears that if I took this apart I could probably get a small drill bit drill it in maybe about a millimeter possibly maybe half a mil and just put a small wafer magnet on it so I can use regular bits not a bad thing that is a ball detent but I would have preferred a magnet on the end. So I can run regular non-double-sided uh, bits just fine. Okay. Now the lock on this is back here. The lock button. Press it. You can see it. Do that. Now what do we have on that side? This side, again I have to use a tool because I don't have nails. And the awl is very, very sharp. Um, ask me how I know. <laughs> right? So, on the back side here, I'm not going to completely unlock lock them. You have an awl, which is a regular style awl with a hole in it. An awl. E-W-L. So, if you're working on leather or canvas, you can, once you get this locked in there, Push it through, get your string through, pull it out, go another way around, and so you can stitch with it. And most brands do not add the hole, which is kind of pointless because then you have to work on trying to get the thread through the hole of the fabric you're working on. This is a nice touch. This is usually found on more high-end tools, but having on something that's below $100 currently, current price is below $100 for this. I believe it's on sale because of Labor Day. 
um, I would take a look at it. So you get this nice wall for it. Otherwise, we have a large flathead screwdriver, a medium flathead screwdriver. They call this a, well slotted or flathead. In America, we call it flathead. Most other parts of the world call it slotted. So you have a slotted and a small. Sometimes it's referred to as an eyeglass um, size, but it's too big for an eyeglass size. And then on this, we have a wire stripper and a can opener, and you could also use it as a bottle opener. So that's cool. Right? You also have an integrated uh, centimeter uh, and millimeter and inch ruler on here on both sides. So that's kind of cool. All right. So you have a lot of functions on this. Now, other than issues where the where some of the shanks might be too thin on the replacement blades which is not a fault of the tool at all so don't blame it on the tool it's not its fault um, it's not rock tools fault it's the manufacturer for some reason they seem to have some thinner blades um, you know so you have that there um, and the weirdness of the where you can't lock the the scissor, which I think can be fixed pretty easily, because once it locks, it's solid. It works just fine when it's locked. When it's not, like right now, it's coming out like it's not completely locking. There it goes. It made a click noise, and that's pretty strong. But it gets stuck there. So the scissor is probably the largest scissor I've seen on any of the multi tools um, that are like this. But it's something weird about how that locking mechanism is. So that's a bit iffy on my end. Still works. You just got to fiddle with it a little bit more. There's only one other issue I have with this. And I think it's, well, two things actually. My apologies. Um, I think it's a lost opportunity. In my personal opinion, it's a lost opportunity. Because, let's pull these out again. Just the two screwdriver bits. Okay, so you have these two screwdriver bits. These are flathead. There's nothing wrong with them other than I would prefer that to be an actual eyeglass style, a small one. Because if you're using this and you probably have the sheath on you, so obviously the one on the tool is a little bit bigger. That one is the same size, if not a tad smaller. So you have four flathead drivers there, two on here. I think that could have been utilized better. So the larger one, no problem with. It makes sense that they have a slightly larger one on there to go to follow suit with the Phillips head that's on the opposite side. But I would have preferred a smaller blade, smaller driver um, on that side. So that's the lowest opportunity, in my opinion, because now you have six slotted drivers and only five of them are different. So there's that. You have the specialty one here with the uh, these little dots here. Um, I've never come across them, ever. Um, I actually have entire um, precision kits that have them, and I've never used those tools. Um, so I'm not sure what they're for. I'm sure that somebody has a use for them, but in my opinion, and this is purely my opinion, I would have gotten another next size up of Phillips or another couple of sizes of Torx. Now, the good news about the Torx is they're the tamper-resistant ones, so they have the indent in them for security Torx or tamper-resistant Torx, depending on what they're called by you. Most brands, they're solid. They don't have that little notch on the inside. So that's a nice part. I do like that. This tool up here I don't use at all, and we have a lot of flathead screwdrivers for some reason. Now there's only one other thing that I have a problem with, 
and I think what I'm just going to do is seeing I have the I have the other uh, was it 22 and one that has the pocket clip. I don't know if the pocket clip will fit on this, but I will probably try because sometimes I just need the tool and I don't need the extra accessories. You know, like if I'm just working around my own property, I don't need everything else, and I'm too lazy to put a belt on, having a pocket clip would have been nice. Not the end of the world, not by any means. Consider almost everything else in this is thought out pretty well, including the how they have the uh, the uh, elastic on the side to hold everything. So it's not a bad tool at all. It's actually it's a really nice tool. I just think that a little bit more thought would have been going on for like the flathead drivers. Maybe a pocket clip, um, and that's about it. So, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I will answer them as soon as I can. I'm usually pretty good at that. Um, in the description will be a link to Amazon, um, where you can purchase this, and the other one that I had done a previous video on, which is the 22 and one and I'll also leave a link in the description to that video as well, just in case you want to compare them. And um, that's it. If you like this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And um, if you're looking at a budget friendly, meaning below currently below $100, I would take a look at Rock Toll. They seem to be really, really close to some of the high-end American brands, um, if not better in some cases. So thank you for watching and have